So good morning, friends. Good morning, Frankworks. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Are you excited for the project? Recently, we've put together a quilt uh, that will be hanging up in the, uh, it's not a fabric quilt, but it's based on the design of the quilt, and it'll be hanging up in our band space for folks to see tomorrow. Um, we've also been talking about anti-racism and inclusivity, and that will be continuing in to the next arc, including um, taking a wonderful field trip to the West Oakland Mural Project. So that was a very big highlight for us all. I'm going to pass the mic to Irina. Yes. Hello. Um, we've also been doing quite a bit of reading and writing this arc. Um, we started off in here by reading There There by Tommy Orange and doing a lot of different um, engagements and projects with that book. Um, more recently, we've read in small lit groups several different novels. We've read Felix Ever After, Challenger Deep, and Long Way Down. And we're going to be continuing that um, lit study in the spring. We've also been doing some grant writing with the help of a visiting professor from Santa Clara University. And that skill has been a huge leap in our, our writing abilities and will definitely take away a lot of important skills from that uh, workshop that we've been working on. And with that, I think we're going to be transitioning into the students coming up here and giving their presentations. We do have a quick technical explanation to give to the students about the tab switching between the presentations. But after that, we'll welcome up our first presenters, who I believe are Lucy and Iris. But before you come up, um, let's just give a quick orientation to these tabs. Okay, so um, this is set up by our wonderful Henry, who's helped us been just so uh, instrumental in providing tech support to our band. Um, shout out to Henry. Um, but it's set up in mirroring. So what you're going to do is we're going to go over to this screen, which is um, a separate one, and you're going and all the tabs are lined up on the top in order. The ones that are uh, have already been posted in the document. So you're just going to look for your name and kind of fill the box. Okay. And if you have any trouble, Ali and I will come up here and take over. All right. So. Lucy and, Dor and Iris, come on up. Hi. Um, Murder Mystery Movie by me and Lucy. So, the beginning of the arc, a film expert from the company Beta, Jamie DeWolf, came in. He does a lot about filmmaking and just general stuff with cameras. Um, we were going to be making band documentaries, so we need to learn a lot about that. Me and Lucy got inspired by this. We really enjoyed the filmmaking and wanted to use it for some kind of project of our own. So we focused on making a fiction film, but what would this film be about? <laughs> we decided to make a murder mystery film because at the time, it's no murder, but given the time frame, we decided to focus on production rather than quality. Um, <laughs> our plan was to make a short murder mystery film. Um, 
with an original script to familiarize ourselves with filmmaking, um, even if the quality is <laughs> Our original plan was to spend all the time before break brainstorming, writing the outline, writing the script, and storyboarding. And then when we got back from break in January, we would begin filming. But, oh boy, foreshadowing. In classic Brightworks untested project plan fashion, this didn't work. But we started brainstorming our outline anyway. Um, we knew it didn't need to be good, but like murder mysteries are complicated as well anyway. Uh, so it took a while, but eventually we had a final outline. And then we could begin working on the script. Even though we were trying to rush because at this point we were a bit behind, the script still took a bit of time, which we weren't really expecting. But because we weren't taking this super seriously, we had a lot of fun writing the characters. And of course, we needed actors. So we forced our friends to be the actors. Um, so then after a few last minute switches and replacements, we were pretty much ready to start filming. And then we lost a week to external setbacks, which was not very good for our schedule, considering we only had about around an, a bit more than an hour a day four times a week for three weeks, we knew that wasn't enough time to actually get our film done. So we started forcing our friends to hang out after school and do filming then. Even on weekends, we spent five hours on a Saturday getting most of our shots done. We actually witnessed an active fire during that. So big shout out to our friends for helping out in their free time. <laughs> Um, so then once we had a fair amount of filming done, um, I started editing in Premiere Pro, um, but because we were filming sporadically and out of order, there wasn't a ton I could have done yet, um, and it became very clear that there was zero continuity within our film. There are children who just multiple times in scenes. Um, <laughs> Setbacks and challenges. Oh boy, we had a lot. So. To quickly summarize, the main thing we had to worry about was our actor's schedule since people had stuff to do and also all the other projects we were working on for school. We still needed time to do our actual school work. Also, as I previously mentioned, we lost a week to personal reasons, which we were right about to begin filming. That was upsetting. But um, also other little things that just show up, like shots taking more time than they should, setting us back even further. So of course, you know, Despite all of our setbacks, it was still very fun. Uh, I really enjoyed filming, but my personal favorite part was writing the script. It was really fun to make all these goofy characters. Gonna have a trailer at expo <laughs> that's basically it thank you any questions we we were originally considering doing um hamlet right but then we decided to make our own script because hamlet's a bit complicated and we didn't have any other ideas so we wanted to make our own Yes. Um, we don't know yet, but it takes like 10 minutes to do just a script. Probably a bit, probably longer than that, but yeah. Any other questions? Then I believe we're handing it off to Nora Bell. Oh no. It's actually stamped close to the computer. 
Um, since this is my last year at Brightworks, I wanted my final project to connect to all my previous years. But, okay. um, I was, at first I was thinking about doing something related to my past projects, making paintings, recreating a project a week, and making a pop-up book out of all of them. Oh my gosh, I'm too fast. Oops. Um, but none of these ideas were making me as excited as a pop-up senior project should. A few years ago, Ali Sutton, a former Brightworks student, uh, designed and painted a mural of all the Brightworks arts on one of the old building walls for her project. Um, <laughs> and when I started thinking about what to do for my senior project, I came across this video of a woman painting a mural. And it made me think of Ali's project. And that's how I came up with my project, which was making uh, my own Brightworks art mural. Uh, this project, uh, gave, uh, sorry, <laughs> when thinking about this project, I felt the excitement that I had been looking for. I'm still working on a title, but this is a senior project, so I have time. Um, uh, since the school is moving next year, I decided I want, wanted my pin to be portable, so I decided to make my own canvas. This would also help me expand my project to more of a whole year thing. And then the documentary happened. At the end of 2021, the whole band started working on a documentary project. I was the director and editor for the Golden Gate Park Communities. We spent the uh, end of 2021 until break getting interviews. And then Patrick and I started editing as soon as we got back. Knowing that it would probably take some time, I left the homework of January open for just editing. But January turned into February, and I was so interested and invested in making things about the money finished that I didn't actually leave much time to work on my senior project. While most of my time was spent working on the documentary and other assignments, I did get a chance to start a brainstorm of images and text for each by works art. I chose six images slash graphics, got the dictionary definition, and wrote down a few words at any time I think of the art. I then spent the two nights after Expo trying to figure out how to make the pages in the physical book to have an Expo. It was really fun getting all the pages to print in the right direction and figuring out which one would go where, um, and it was really satisfying when I actually got the right printing was able to make it into a physical book. Beginning in the exploration phase of the next art, I will start focusing uh, more on the design of my painting. I'm also planning to get into contact with Allie and start talking with her about her process. I'll do a more detailed brainstorm using images from the internet and my own drawings and come up with a few, few sketches for my final painting. After that, I'll get some feedback and choose the final design to paint. While I, may not, while I may have gotten a slow start to working on my project, I'm confident that I will be able to finish by the end of this year. I'm really happy with how the documentary is turning out. Thank you, Annie Bliss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Um, so my project was doing experiments with Coriolis with the Coriolis effect. Um, 
my mission statement was I wanted to build a rotating table that I could do different experiments with, with projectiles and pendulums, because I had seen some videos about cool experiments you can do with those. So I had many setbacks, including I was trying to learn a modeling program called Fusion 360, which is a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. And also my 3D printer just not working at all for like a week until I learned that the school had a working 3D printer and I used that instead. Um, at like week five or six, I had, since I had so many setbacks, I didn't have much to show for my project and I didn't think I had much time left to do the experiments I wanted to. And so I was tired and I was kind of just gonna like try to BS my way through my presentation. And my dad just uh, saw me just laying on the floor and decided to give me a pep talk. And so I decided I would bring my project home and work on it at home over the weekend. And I think I actually got something cool to show for it. So this is a simple drawing I've done of how it works. And on one of them, it shows the reference frame from the camera of moving with the table and the reference frame of spinning separately from the table. And you can see the different ways where from one point of view it goes in a circle and one point of view it goes in a straight line. And this affects um, a lot of things since our planet is spinning like clouds going down the planet. And also some ships can shoot um, the bullets so far that they have to account for it because the ship they're shooting at will be in a different position from when they fired the shell. And um, my conclusion is that I, did not plan this project out very well and I didn't account for setbacks. And so in the future, I need to plan more time for setbacks and make sure I have a good way of making parts that isn't gonna just die on me at halfway through my project and planning time for setbacks. So yeah, any questions? <laughs> Um, since it was water arc, I was like doing some research into ships and I found out that the ships, I, when I found out ships actually have to count for that when making long range shots, I found that really cool and interesting. And so I wanted to do a project and do that and try to show it on a small scale. Yes, Michelin. Um, I was like, um, I had, I made part of it with a laser cutter. And then the rest of it I made by hand. Philip. Can you Um he I was just like tired and he was like, I've had to do this once before. And he was just like that, that was really not fun for you. You don't want to have to repeat that. And I was like, fine. And he's like, okay, I'll help you. We can do this over the weekend. It'll take a couple of days. And He's like, I can help you. I can give you a ride to bring your project home. And so that just convinced me to try to pull my project out of the gutter. Hi, my name is Sully Warner and welcome to my presentation. Um, my project is called the Water Galaxy. So for my project, I wanted to make two well-developed homes connecting the two bodies of water. And I also intended to create a mini gallery dome out of cardboard, displaying 12 photographs out of capture that, de that depict the theme of water as well. The gallery would provide a museum-like experience. And personally, I like to do projects that like, have never 
been done before and this project definitely represented something that I haven't seen. Um, here are my goals in more precise detail. So for my product, I wanted to make a mini gallery. For uh, my school goal, I wanted to practice writing poetry. And for my learning goal, I wanted to learn about the, like the history of poetry or just the more in-depth facts about how to write a poem. Um, I decided to do this project because of a couple of reasons. And to provide you with some background information, I officially got my declaration approved in what would be week six of the expression phase. So my week one was like everybody else's approximately like week six. Um, and I'm used to starting my expression projects a little later than usual, but like never this late. And it definitely threw me off. Um, and this was one of the biggest setbacks for me in this project and this process because like in the beginning I had a couple of declarations for a couple of projects but once I like thought about it I liked this project the best and it just made more sense um but to get back to the reason I chose this project was basically three things so I have like a never-ending interest in photography and poetry and I also love everything and everything everything and anything in San Francisco. Um, and I've done many projects based in San Francisco, like about something in San Francisco before. And yeah, the inspiration for this project would also be our where I'm from poems. In class, we did an assignment of like making your own where I'm from poem. And this definitely sparked my memory that I really like to write poetry. Um, and Week one was full of preparation, planning, and brainstorming. Um, as you can see here, I made like a rough sketch of a brainstorm that, of what the photos in San Francisco I wanted to capture that depicted water. And I thought of scenes like the Yamaya mural at the Women's Building, the scene of the Golden Gate Bridge, and like anything I thought depicted water, like plants or anything. Um, and then here you can see some images of my process of actually building the gallery and like I knew that wasn't gonna be like really like in-depth like gallery that had like a door on and stuff like but I only had three weeks so I tried to like do the best I could and here on the right that was kind of my vision um I had this vision in my head and once it came out it definitely was what I was intending but that's definitely like what I saw in my head down um, And then here are some more photos of my process. Um, yeah. For the poetry writing process, I was intending to make two um, pretty well versed poems depicting my interpretations of water. I started by studying different types of poetry and many tips about the art. I brainstormed everything that came to mind when I thought of water, like keywords like tea or ocean or plants or life or anything like that. And then I started to actually study like different types of poetry, like Sinkain, Haiku, and acrostic poems. Um, and it was actually really interesting to learn about different types of poetry because I'm used to kind of just freestyling and writing what I think is poetry in my mind. Uh, and then, yeah, it was also a challenge to start writing because it is such a like abstract topic and poetry can be anything that meets you. So since I had this broad topic of water, it was really hard to put words I thought would fit right because it can literally be anything. Um, yeah, so I had made the structure, the rough draft. And now it was time for me to start like finishing my poems and things like that. And I also felt and still feel a bit of disappointment looking back because there are times that I feel like I could have made it better, but also I had three weeks with like a bunch of other assignments and I'm just someone who always wants to do more, do better. And I'm not ever really satisfied. So I think that's just me being me. Uh, Oh yeah, and then for taking photos around SF, I, I actually did this last Saturday with my mom because 
I was just worried about getting the gallery done, getting homes done, and me and my mom don't really have a lot of time in the week or after school, so we saved for Saturday so I can take all my photos, and then the next day I would get them printed. Um, and I actually printed the photos last night and posted them from Walgreens. Um, and yeah, it was really fun to drive around because in the car, I had my little brainstorm of what I thought was scenes of water that I wanted to capture, but also like on the spot, just like, mom, like, what do you think water is in San Francisco? And, like having fun car rides with her was really nice. And then here's my final uh, product. And it tended, it, it turned out how I intended it to. Um, and I kind of freestyled it in the end, just because I was like thinking of things to add on that I felt would be best. And then you can see that it's not like totally finished because of course the poems and the photographs aren't in there yet because they were printed yesterday. But at Expo, it will be all finished and you're welcome to come inside. It can fit one person and it's, you can like turn, it'll be like really cool. Um, and yeah, so I also wanted to get them framed, but I'm not gonna do that anymore because that's just me trying to do more than I can. But I will be really happy when like, once everything's inside and it'll be like really cool to look at. And to be completely honest, I guess it's kind of understandable due to the aspect of time, but this project was not the most fun to do, which is, yeah. But it was a really good a learning experience for me because sometimes it's, I learned that it's okay to not do like a project based upon research and math or writing or graphs or anything. And it's okay to just do a more chill, relaxed project. And it definitely had fun. It just wasn't, it's not something I would do again. Um, like I said, the day where my mom and I took pictures around SF, it was just a really like fun day. And yeah, I also learned that I, it's confirmed that I have a never ending interest in photography and poetry, but I did really enjoy writing the poems and I definitely want to keep writing and keeping photos of anything I like. Um, yeah, it, it's successful and I learned a lot. So are there any questions? Um, I think the favorite, you'll see that episode because I don't have it here, but it's like a flower that I took and I dumped water on it. <laughs> And it just looked really cool because, oh yeah, and I used my phone because I didn't have a camera, or I did, but like I didn't use it, um, and I had no time. So definitely, it's like this purple like flower, almost looks like a poppy, and it has like water droplets, and it's like in mid air. Any other questions? Yeah. Um. Okay, I'll try to remember. Um. I think if you go back in my poetry process, yeah, uh, water is the geyser of creativity that shoots out of your mind. Um, I really like that line. And this was just like a uh, little excerpts of my process. So these are edited now and way longer and stuff. But when I first started uh, writing, I thought of like story and stuff like that. Like seriously, sometimes I do, but other times I know your line water. It was like a poem that I was speaking to water or like the ocean, my experience as a surfer. And you, you can definitely see them on Expo if you have more. I can definitely talk about that. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Sorry. Hi, my name is Charlotte, and for my project this art, I decided to do an animation music video of Rocket Man by Elton John. But let me explain how I got there first. A long, long time ago, I was in my room, 
from listening to music and kind of zoning off when I had an idea. Um, I already knew that I wanted to do an art project, specifically an animation project, because although I draw a lot, I wanted to do something that was out of my comfort zone, like animating. But I couldn't just animate about nothing. I needed another component. But that's when I had an idea. A few years ago, during song art in Indigo Band, we did this thing called song of the day where we would each in every week each person would give would <laughs> would play a song and we would each we would all discuss like meanings behind the song and how we interpreted that song and i found that really interesting so that was my second component i would make an animation about a song's interpretations i was really excited this is something that was like that I was going to love doing, but it was also out of my comfort zone because I hadn't really seriously done animation before. However, I ran into a problem. My old nemesis, time itself. <laughs> I've always struggled with um, deadlines and I've been an avid procrastinator for a really long time and starting a big project like this was most likely going to accentuate that. <laughs> Plus, I had just moved back to Brightworks a few weeks in between uh, project time and so I was behind. But I decided to ignore that because I'm such an optimist. <laughs> But I ran into a different problem. I decided to, when I, during the week that I was supposed to interview people in person and ask them about their interpretation, um, I was away, I was at home. So I decided to do a survey instead on Google Forms, where I asked people to write down what they thought about the lyrics, any memories that they had connected to the song, they'd listened to it with a loved one or something. They had any imagery that came to mind they could draw pictures or send stock photos just generally what the song meant to them and so i sent it out to my friends and everything but i didn't get enough responses so i ended up sending it to the entire school and parents but again i didn't get as many responses as i wanted but i continued anyway i compiled the doc of all of the ideas that people had come up with, especially the ones that intrigued me, because I knew I could make an animation about those. I wrote notes on those just to um, expand on them, basically interpreting other people's interpretations. <laughs> the next step that I had to do was storyboards. This was my favorite part. It was basically drawing, so it wasn't actually animated. A challenge that I had experienced during this was that I had to incorporate a lot of different interpretations into like an actually cohesive story, which was complicated, but it ended up working out. I actually had a lot of fun doing this too because I got to curl up on the couch and just draw and listen to Rocket Man over and over and over again. <laughs> but then I realized how much time I had left. And so I had to start animating before I was even done with storyboards. Animating had a whole different set of problems. First of all, if any of you know animation, it takes time, which I did not have. I also realized pretty quickly that I animated like I draw, which means that I was basically illustrating each individual frame. So that was taking a lot of time too. Here is part of a frame that I drew when I was just zoning out and listening to music. And this is a frame directly after that when I remembered I probably shouldn't be taking so much time on these. The next step that I had to do was edit it on iMovie and sync up the animation to the song. I had a slight problem though. I didn't actually have that much to edit because I didn't have enough animation. I only had maybe 14 seconds of a four minute song. 
<laughs> yeah. In conclusion, a lot of fun doing this. And I will, if I don't have a project idea for next arc, I might even consider uh, continuing this animation and finalizing it a bit better and might even put it in my art portfolio when I'm applying to art classes or even colleges. Anyways, any questions? Uh, probably just my computer with a loop of the 15 seconds. Um, yeah. <laughs> What is the working name? I don't know. 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 I I don't really remember what I answered. <laughs> um, well, actually, I hadn't deeply thought about the lyrics, but um, I got a response that, or actually two responses that said that, especially the first line reminded them of like drug use and like mental health issues. And I thought that was a really interesting interpretation. Um, and also another person answered like, uh, part of the song reminded them of like climate worries. And I resonated with that a lot. Um, I don't know. I think getting into the flow was really hard. And like, I had to kept, keep on reminding myself like, no, you're not illustrating. You can't do so many details. It's not going to work out for you. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, Enrique, if you don't mind, can you just, can you do yours now? I wanted to do this project because it would be a new experience and something that's about my hobbies. Um, I love making food with my family and friends. My goals were to use two sauces and make my own personal sauce. 
the Shazam sauce. Um, I also wanted to improve my cooking skills and share it with others. I also wanted to make a video documenting my experience. My main expert was Marcella, a friend of mine. She helped me by coming to the store with me and buying the ingredients. She also was the person, the camera person while I directed the shots. People think buffalo style wings were invented at the Anchor Bar in Buffalo, New York. But actually the first chicken wing restaurant in Buffalo, New York was called Wings and Things by John Young, a black chef who's not historically credited for his work. I started to brine the chicken wings with salt and chicken, uh, pickling spices and put them in the 10 hours overnight. The photo on the left is me when I seasoned wings into a bowl. I then put that aside and started working on my Shazam sauce, which you see on the right. This photo represents me making my Shazam sauce. On the right, you see that I taste tested multiple New Mexican chili powders for heat and flavor. Chimayo chili powder came from an area in New Mexico where my Vigil family is from. Then I added fresh garlic, organic honey, soy sauce, and blended it with the New Mexican chili powder that I chose. These are photos of me pad drying my brined chicken wings and getting ready for fry, getting ready, getting them ready to fry. This is me making my batter for the wings. To make the batter, I mix flour, baking soda, cornstarch, and water. Throughout this project, I've had a lot of challenges. For example, the image on the left shows the food processor malfunctioning and I had to transfer things to the blender. The photo on the right is a photo of me struggling to fry my batter, my battered wings because of the extreme oil popping and bubbling. It even got in my eye. These are my photos of my final product. In the end, I made three wings and three sauces and fried them in three different ways. In peanut oil, duck fat, and vegetable oil. I shared them with five of my friends and the Shazam sauce was, the Shazam wing was the most liked one. I also made a 20 minute video documenting what I've done. If you're interested in seeing my documentary video, it will be displayed at Expo, along with chicken wings to take home and to taste test. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Yeah. What was your favorite chicken every day? Um, Frank's Red Hot Sauce, because it was the spicy sauce. Please? Can I buy one? Yeah, at Expo. Uh, I will have to taste this. Yeah, of course, everyone can ask me. Yeah. What do you think might be the next thing you Oh, yeah. my very creative title, I uh, focused my project around building terrariums. And uh, I th think I, I kind of chose this product, this project because it's water art, but I didn't really know a lot of things that were water related that I was like either really passionate about or like super interested in. But one thing I thought about that like, I guess needs water is plants. Um, I think plants are, in general, really interesting, and I really wanted to learn more about them and just topic of ecology. Uh, so that's in the book, just like making a few small little like ecosystems or terrariums. So I chose I chose this project, like uh, like I said, because it would be be feed working on so you know, why not just do like a small little a few small programs and then you know either study them or I don't know how people can read about these in easy confusing way and uh I think a, a big obstacle in this project was our was a lot of other extra bigger group projects we were working on as a class 
uh, we were working on our film project, which I was directing. And on top of that, had to finish an expo project. So at the same time, while I was trying to balance actually getting footage and getting everything done, I had editing after, to do after, after that to do on Premiere and also working on my project and getting my exo board done, which is all just kind of, was kind of a mess. So my original plan was just to have a few terrariums with different needs and different environments. Um, so a, some type of paludarium, which is a terrarium that is submerged in water and just an, a terrarium that would naturally live in a very dry environment. So lots of like succulents, like cacti and like other leafy succulents. And also uh, just a terrarium, another kind of like a dry terrarium, but it would live in a moister, more uh, humid environment. So when I actually started my project, I had, I pretty much, I started with some random fish, fish bowl I found in the art studio, but that worked. And this was the kind of, I guess, first iteration of my dry terrarium. I spent a lot of time in this project, more probably more time in this project, researching and learning about plants in terrariums than actually making much. But uh, what I started with was just learning about drainage and um, how I can distribute water throughout terrariums. I learned a lot about like using a syringe. So like if you had two different, uh, two different plants in terraria that needed different moisture, you could water them differently according to their, I guess, um, moisture needs. But this one was just gonna be a dry one. And this was the near finished product of this terrarium. I originally wanted there to be a cactus, so hopefully I can get some like small, probably like a golden ball cactus to put in this terrarium. But uh, so far in this one, I have elephant bush and a darly sunshine and Tillandsia, which is more of just like a decorative thing. And then also some like decorative dry Spanish moss. Um, and another thing I kind of wanted to add to this project, like I had said in the beginning, was some type of paper or some type of like little infographic thing talking about what you were seeing in my terrarium and like how these plants work, what are their needs. So I started out just by making these little drawings of what was in the actual terrarium. Um, I think what I would do with a lot more time uh, because we had so many other little things to work on throughout this part, I would uh, obviously probably you know finish my project and uh, at least have at least have some variety in different ecosystems or different like smaller terrariums just so I can maybe do something maybe do something where I'm studying how they're living or how they're thriving throughout the weeks. Uh, yeah, that's all. Any questions? Hopefully, um, hopefully by Expo, I have a, another one that is in a moisture environment because I had bought plants for that, that need more humidity and moisture. So hopefully I'll have something like that for Expo. But I think even just for fun, I might build more because I don't know, it's just, it's just nice. Uh, it's kind of relaxing. Would you need like a large glass upside down wine bottle? Sure. <laughs> selling on like Etsy of like little like very small terrariums with like little decorative like miniature fairy things and like I don't know little decorative like toad school mushrooms well they're not real but like um I thought I, I don't know anything like they were like very like fairy inspired little terrarium things that people are selling and they're kind of popular at the moment so maybe if I were to sell something like that it would be similar to a little terrarium like that is that all? Yes. All right. So that's the first wave of uh, our whole day of presentations. What we're going to do right now is take a break until 1045. Right now it's 1025. So stretch your legs, get some water. Um, we're going to return with Noah at 1050. Um,
but please come back at 1045 so we can get all settled and make sure everybody's all good. Um, okay, see you in 20. Thank you, thank you. Yeah.
All right, so what you do is do this for you. And we'll just use the arrow keys. It doesn't okay. show on here, but yeah. it's okay. All right. All right, so first up we have Noah. Uh, I did unmute. Yes. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, thank you all so much for your attention to the first round. We've got another um, set of folks before lunch. And first up is Noah. Uh, all right, so um, my project fictional elements comparison. Um, I compared the fictional four elements from the cartoon Adventure Time, which are fire, ice, candy, and slime, with the like real world four elements. Um, yeah, and I presented it in like a mini black box theater thing. Yeah, and then so I have um, photos of like the original, like the, there's incarnations of the four elements in Adventure Time for like different timelines. And so there's the four of them up there and then the like real world four elements. And so my main questions were, how are they connected? And how can I further explore the connection and the topic? Um, and so initially I researched like chemical makeup and stuff and like ingredients of like can different types of candy and slime so that I can like compare. Um, yeah, and then I, for my project, I did the like original four incarnations of the elements. Um, on the top is slime, cinema slimy D, and then fire is Malthus, and then candy is Chasbury, and ice is urgent evergreen. Um, and then, this is my notes about like candy ingredients and like chemical properties. Um, I have about slime too, I just didn't show it. And then, and so like I, was, well, um, I um, looked at the ingredients of, um, of um, candy and slime and I like looked to see like if it was like, fire, water, earth, or air. And I like assigned each of them like a different thing or not assigned, but like identified, I guess, like what each of them were. So like, for example, I have some of the cards up there. One of them was like 
gummy bears. Um, and so like, for example, if sugar was one of the ingredients, I would identify that as earth, or if like heat was one of the ingredients, I would identify that as air and fire. And then I fortunately ran into minimal challenges um, because I know that I am a chronic procrastinator. And so I like gave myself a lot of extra time to procrastinate and run into challenges, which I fortunately did. I um, like I set realistic goals for myself and was able to meet them and like bring them down to smaller parts. And so, and that's a photo of like the backdrop of my project. And then this is the like final product. There's, it's like a little mini thing. And then there's the little pouches with the words on it. And those have like the like facts and information and stuff about the things of like um, candy and slime. Yeah. Uh, any questions or favorite part? <laughs> Uh, I know it is uh, difficult to finish one project. And I'm just wondering what's Well, okay. Initially, I like, knew that there was a lot of other projects going on at the same time. Um, and I like set myself realistic goals. And I also like um, budgeted time for me to like, I know that I'm going to like. I can be really focused one week and then the next week I'll lose, lose all motivation and not be able to do anything. And so I kind of like budgeted my time for that. And so, and also I already had the like outside of the black box thing made. And I also have experience making this kind of like prototype stage set type thing before um, in, in like a short period of time. So I already felt confident in the things that I was doing and I like put it in like a manageable time frame and I did it in like small pieces and in like a manageable, like manageable chunks. Yes, Lynn? Why are you different I don't actually know. Um, I have like another one that's kind of similar of like it has like a backdrop um, and like a, it doesn't have a floor, but it has like a backdrop and like uh, other like set design pieces. Um, and I just it just kind of sits in my room, so probably that. I don't know. I may put it on my wall. Henry, this is you, yeah? I also already found some of the thoughts on it. So it would be different if it just had that much. The outside walls of the full of the twelve feet of fire marks and the holes in the free feet of the angle on it, which is welded together. It also has some screws, so you can take like, bricks to make sure that they're held in place when it's made for fire. I will need to Thank you. 
almost complete. One of my main inspirations for this was was Another main inspiration was solitaire. Probably the most difficult part of my project so far has been sourcing the parts and just the difficulty of the to arrive at that expected and then by also being able to correct my mistakes that I can apply and I've really enjoyed the learning skills such as welding and machine. I currently have finish the burner for the forge, which is the injury effect to suck air into the propane and mix it. I have also completed two sides of the body of the forge and the bottom is almost done. Overall, this project has been very fun and I can't wait to get the box in my Any questions? Yes. Um, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to make my first thing. Um, I haven't done it in a while, so probably just going to practice like just hammering and twisting stuff. I yeah, I just need to practice mostly. How hot is it? Um, I haven't tested that yet. Uh, my dad said he had some way to test that, but we haven't gotten around to that because we've been mostly recently focusing on like welding and together. Yes. Um, I think the uh, yes. Hopefully, I'll be connecting the bottom, like welding it together, uh, after school today, and it should be done and be ready. And bring, I'll bring it in at first. So. Yes. Um, just blacksmith, like, I kind of want to make, I don't know, like a butter knife or something. I haven't really decided. Yes. Why? So you can um, use the arrow keys here. Okay. Hello, my name is. Hello, my name is Linnea, and this is my project, The Beginning, a multimedia video telling the story of creation. I chose this project because I wanted to do an animation project for a long time. When Obsidian started filmmaking, I jumped at the opportunity to work with animation, and that resulted in this project. I knew I was going to have a hard time animating the whole video, so I did add some other mediums, such as claymation and stop motion, both which I've worked with before. I knew I was going to need help with an artist statement, so I started brainstorming um, who could help me. Justine quickly came to mind, so I wasted no time in contacting her. I knew I was going to need help. Uh, oops. <laughs> this was uh, some of the behind the scenes for my claymation. I had a small setup in the corner of my room and it consisted of six sheets of green paper stuck to the walls and floors. I used this for a green screen. My character was made out of polymer clay. Um, I chose polymer clay because it doesn't dry out. A uh, slight flash warning on the next slide if anyone uh, can't handle or needs to look away for like 30 seconds. Um, this is a sped up time lapse of my first section of my animation. The animation was by far the hardest part to make and um, eh, motivation dwindled almost enough during um, this project, but I did get it done in the end. It's a little longer than my um, writing this slide. So finish watching. Woo! Okay. Uh, there were quite a few setbacks um, I experienced during this project. You remember when I said polymer clay doesn't dry out? It, that's true, 
but it does get a lot more cracky and like crumbly the older it gets. So I did have some trouble with my character's limbs falling off during production. That was not planned for. Um, so after figuring out that whole situation, it worked in the end. Um, I also struggled a lot with motivation, trying to just keep animating because animating is hard and sucks up way too much time. In the end, I got a four second, no. It took me four weeks to get a 30 second animation. I have so much respect for people who have like, do this as a job, it's hard. Um, I thought this was the end of my hardships, but no, I made a very stupid mistake. The green screen, no, yes. Oh, did I not switch the slides? The green screen, sorry, I think I messed up the slides a bit. Um, I have a green character. And in film, I didn't think to shoot them on a different screen. So when I went to edit the video together, my character just disappeared. And I had to go reshoot them again. So that's all good, finally. In the end, no. Why are my slides messed up? It's fine, they're out of order, who cares? Uh, in the end, I'm happy with, um, what, uh, with my outcome. I know like there's always room for improvement, but being my first large animation and a nice revisit to stop motion claymation, this was the best I could get out of my time. Any questions? Hello? Uh, the stop motion was most likely the easiest. I didn't have to take like a ton of photos for that one. And I liked felting the characters, so that was fun. Um, yeah. Joe? What? I will most likely just have, um, I will print out my artist statement and have just my computer with the full video just running, most likely. Charlie? Oh, uh, this, it's uh, like kind of a story that I wrote. It's a folk tale kind of about uh, creation of like water, fire, and life, something around along those lines. Seriously? Do you plan on continuing this project? It has come to a kind of a nice stopping point, and I think I'm going to leave this idea alone for a bit that does not mean i won't continue animating now that i have like proper tools for it through this project so i will most likely continue animating but i think this project is done uh oh uh mike um, they um funny thing is like they're very irrelevant to my whole thing mostly because they're in like two scenes at the end. Um, so I didn't have to shoot like a ton, you shoot a whole bunch of photos, but they're back in now and don't just kind of fade out with like the green screen. So fix that. All right. Oops. All right. Uh, so as you can see, I made a dragon's layer. 
because dragons do exist. Um, my name's Ozias, by the way, or Ozzy. So, lizards. I really, really love them. They probably consume 50% of all thoughts I have in my brain at this point. Um, all of those are lizards that I have. The chameleon's name is Puppy. The orange bearded dragon is named is Max. Uh, the gray one is Banjo. And uh, the leopard gecko is Yoki. And then the crested gecko is Garfield. All right, so on July 7th, I got Max. Uh, Max was actually a school pet of Works that was being cast around because the collaborator who owned him left. Um, so he's being passed around from family to family, most of which were pretty young kids. So I put no blame on them, but the, uh, he was pretty sick when he got in my hands. He was malnourished. He was only eating about, reportedly, one blueberry out of people's hands per day. He was refusing to eat. He only defecooped one time in a whole year in someone's care. So, you know, I needed to take care of him. Um, so for my project, I decided to upgrade his enclosure. This is enclosure, his terrarium is too small. Um, yeah, again, I have to put a lot of care into keeping all of my lizards, um, which is something, one of the reasons why I chose this, because I'm so motivated. Um, yeah. So pre-built enclosures are really much too expensive. Um, so I decided to build my own out of plexiglass and plywood with a metal vent. Um, the goal of this was to create one, a larger enclosure, but also a bioactive enclosure, which means it's self-sustaining. Uh, it basically recreates a real ecosystem. Um, so I wanted to do this, but also recreate the ecosystem that they are native to, which is grasslands and deserts in central Australia. Um, these are some of the channels that I got inspiration from. Um, so for this, I had to do a lot of prep in getting all the materials. So I had to get the cleanup crew, AKA some of the creatures to keep it an ecosystem. Um, so I got some dairy cow isopods, I got some live plants. And as you can see, uh, with the thing on my head, I tried making some enclosures. <laughs> I did a lot of online shopping research and the main issue with this, the reason why I had to do so much research is because there is very little, few studies regarding what is ideal for bearded dragons in captivity. Almost all of it is opinion based. And if you ask one care owner, they'll tell you you're abusing them by having something. The other one will say by not having it, you are abusing them. So it's uh, pretty difficult. So I went to the Lone Depot um, the, to try and find the materials. And I did, I found everything I needed and the total was more than it would have been to buy a pre-made one, which was the entire reason why I was going to build one from scratch. Um, so I decided to just order one. And it arrived one week ago broken. <laughs> um, so until then, I have nothing to show, even though I have all of the materials save for the actual terrarium. Um, I will be able to send pictures of it to everyone who wants to see it once it's finally done. Um, and thank you for listening. Any questions? <laughs> The new enclosure is the largest one that I'd be able to fit in my room because ideally it would be four feet by 24 by 24 inches. Um, but this one I that I ordered because it's the only one that can fit in my room and it's still bigger than the minimum. What by yeah, it's a lot bigger is 18 inches by 18 inches by four feet. Um, yeah. 
Go ahead. I'm going to be completely honest. I forget the actual names of most of them, but I got consultation. I went to the Vivarium Beast Bay. Um, they have a whole section of reptile safe, especially like deer dragon safe ones. Um, I got a ficus plant, I got a snake plant, and I got some aloe. All of them. All of them. Uh, yeah, actually, it, okay, to him it is, but I'm kind of a lizard, so I'm very cool there. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Uh, it arrives tomorrow, the terrarium itself, and might write up at night and expose tomorrow, so probably not. Yeah, um, so mine is a combination of, uh, because actually different parts of it have different makeups. There's this thing called excavator clay, um, which kind of has the consistency of very fine sand or soil, but when combined with water, you can essentially sculpt a uh, solid yet malleable by the burrowing reptile substrate that they cannot eat. Um, but it allows them to create hides for themselves that will stay up without collapsing. Um, and then the other parts is a cocoa peats. So like coconut substrate um, mixed combined with some clay sands to keep it from clumping up so that they, they eat it. It doesn't get stuck in the digestive system. Uh, I try not to hold the chameleon when I can, but she acts as syringe feeder sometimes. So, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, but yes, all the other ones I hold. Max really, really likes being held. Um, so, yeah. Uh, um, all right, we have one more presentation before lunch, and it's going to be a slight flip in the schedule, but Roan has agreed to go. Um, and then just as a heads up, after lunch, beginning, um, beginning at 1.15 or so, we're going to have Oscar starting us off for the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with any, so with the extra time after Roan's presentation, we're going to head back up to band spaces and folks can use that time to prep more or work on your projects as needed. Um, so great job to everybody so far. I'm just going to bring this over to the other window. Let's see, is this going to let me do it? All right. Take it away. Hello, my name is Roan Baker, um, and I'm a senior at Brightworks, and this is my project on motorcycle maintenance. So for those who don't know, um, I've been racing motocross since I was 11, and I've grown up around cars and motorcycles my whole life. Um, so in, in October, I got my first street bike. Uh, managing multiple bikes year round was definitely tempting to come a lot. Um, and I kind of lost track of maintenance and stuff like that. So I took on this opportunity to kind of flush out a nice maintenance schedule and routine for each bikes. There are three major parts to this process of the project. Uh, there's my list, which is basically a way to keep track of everything that needs to be done and that I have done, of the actual work on the bikes, and then a reflection that I do after each work session, basically reviewing everything that I did, how it went, and what's good information to know next time. And then I leave school early on Mondays and Tuesdays after lunch to do that. So experts, um, this was all pretty self-taught but I did want to have experts to reach out to if I did have any questions. 
Um, so besides using manuals and YouTube, I had three major experts in this project, which was the shopman tech technicians at my job, which is a motorcycle shop, uh, Tokyo Moto, which is a Japanese motorcycle, motorcycle shop, and then my neighbor, Skylar, who works on bikes and cars. So for week, for week one, uh, I only had one day instead of the two full days. So instead of jumping in straight into a big project, I decided to pull both bikes out and kind of do an inspection and cleanup and kind of flesh out my process and what I was going to be doing for the next six weeks. Week two, I jumped right into my dirt bike. Uh, I pulled off the forks. Uh, every season, it's good to replace the fork seals and oil. Uh, and then along with that, my rebound clicker was stripped, which basically controls how fast your front wheel goes back up. So I replaced that as well. For week three, um, I wanted to do some painting. Uh, so I talked to some paint shops and got some information on how I could do it myself. And I painted my silver frame guards black. There was, was a long process of waiting. So while I was waiting, I was setting up new handlebars and new controls for the bike. Week four, uh, uh, I decided to flush the brakes, which you have to do yearly. Uh, brake, brake fluid is highly corrosive and annoying to work with. So learning to work with it in an appropriate manner was really good and really useful. And then I did it without a uh, pump, which is a special tool that fancy people use. Week five, I decided to remove my mirrors, which was supposed to be a one day kind of thing, but the mirrors were tight, so tight tightened so hard on that I had to dremel them off and it took multiple days, uh, which sucked, but I got them off and then never put new mirrors on. In week six, um, this was the first time I was actually gonna be breaking into the engine uh, and, and actually working within the piston and the valves and all that kind of stuff. Uh, which is a which of which was a big step for me because in the past I've always brought the bikes to the shop to do that. Um, but for this, there was a weird ticking noise. And so I knew it was time to replace or adjust my valves. So I pulled them apart, checked the valves, looked at them, they're all out of spec. And I ordered, okay, it's not up there. Um, I ordered a shim kit, which is basically a part that you were that you replace to keep the valves in spec. And that's what the hot cam shim thing is. Uh, so for next steps, I, a big part of this project was the management and kind of planning phase to kind of keep me in check and in line. Um, so next steps, I really want to go and use this Google Sheets more and kind of expand on how I can use it. Um, and then along with that, there will always be more bike work needing to be done. So that will always be something. Each week had its troubles and uh, conflicts. Um, there was really not a time where there wasn't something that didn't go wrong. Uh, but overall, kind of finding good, trustworthy information online was really difficult. Um, and although I had my experts, Sometimes it's easier to just do a quick Google sheet, Google search, than call someone or text them. Uh, so this was kind of difficult and interesting to see what sources I can trust, and what sources I can't. Um, yeah. Questions? No one? Uh, Yamaha FCO set. Um, legally, no, but I do.
Um, so my current bikes, I've had my street bike since October and then my dirt bike I've had for a bit over a year. I do, yeah. I don't race anymore, but I do track days for fun. Mackenzie. For me, it was probably reassurance, knowing that I did something right um, or that I was tackling something the right way. That was the, where I found them the most useful because typically when I was with them or reaching out to them was after or right before I was about to do a job. Um, so that was nice to kind of confirm that what I was doing was gonna actually fix the problem and not make it worse and kind of turn into a rabbit hole. Thank you.